Say hi. throughout the city. A renaissance in American architecture was underway, and Chicago was a shining star. In 1955, another genius surfaced in Chicago. His name was Fosler Kahn. They called him the Einstein of structural engineering. He was inventing new ways to create buildings taller than anyone had dreamed. Kahn took a job with a prestigious firm of Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, and was soon partnered with Bruce Graham, one of Chicago's most respected architects. By the 60s, the team was designing buildings throughout the city, and thanks to structural innovations by Fosler, some of them were actually starting to live up to the name Skyscraper. So Sears hired some consultants, and those consultants had the latest in cutting-edge technology at their disposal. They called it a computer. They collected mountains of data about how Sears employees worked, when they worked, what they did while they worked. You get the idea. They fed all this data into the computer and got their answer. A building that big was going to take some big thinking. And that's where Fosler Khan and Bruce Graham came in. One day over lunch, Khan was explaining his bundled tubes idea to Graham. Trying to visualize the idea, Graham pulled out a handful of cigarettes and arranged them at different heights. The design would be made up of nine bundled tubes at the base. Two of the tubes would end at the 50th floor, two more at the 66th floor, three at the 90th floor, leaving the tallest tube to continue to the top. While Sears wasn't trying to break any world records at first, they quickly decided to expand their plans and go for the record of world's tallest building. That meant building a structure 110 stories tall with nearly 4.6 million square feet of interior space. Word quickly got out, and overnight, everyone wanted to be a part of a new world record. Sears wanted the perfect location for their new world record home, so they purchased two city blocks near the Chicago River and Chicago's famous Loop. And in August 1970, they broke ground. The project was so big that it took a year before the foundation was complete and the iron workers could get started. To keep things on schedule, giant sections of the building were partially constructed off-site. This allowed the massive structure to shoot up almost two floors each week. As the structure reached ever higher, building conditions got more difficult. Winds were much stronger at the top and temperatures could be as much as 20 degrees colder than at street level. But they kept at it, and after another two years of hard work, the steel skeleton was complete. Then it was time for the hundreds of finishing carpenters, plumbers, and electricians to get to work. And make you feel like you're walking in midair, 103 stories above Wacker Drive and the Chicago River. You're riding up this 1,450-foot modern marble in one of the tower's 104 elevator cars. Your trip to the sky deck will only take about a minute and a half. That means your elevator is traveling at a speed of more than 16 feet per second. The tower opened its doors in 1973 and held the title of the world's tallest building for 25 years. The west antenna reaches 1,730 feet above the Chicago streets. We're now passing 850 feet in San Francisco's Transamerica Pyramid, 970 feet at the Yokohama Landmark Tower, Japan's tallest building, 1,062 feet in Paris's stunning Eiffel Tower, completed in 1889. Hey. 1,205 feet in the Bank of China Tower in Hong Kong. 1,250 feet in the Empire State Building in New York. And now we're here, 103 stories up. 
Welcome to the top. I mean, are we stupid? <laughs> <laughs>